One of my favorite podcasts I listen to uh, is my a guy who's become a friend, Mike Rowe. Uh, he let me come on the podcast one time. The ratings went down dramatically. He hasn't spoken to me since. But the uh, but uh, we did a long form with him and uh, America's you know famous dirty jobs guy. Uh, and he and I have done several things together since he uh, spoke here at uh, Entree Leadership in 2020 in the middle of crazy land at the time. And, uh, you know, we've been having this conversation lately off and on from two or three different angles about the labor crisis in America. So I wanted to have Mike on and talk about it for just a few minutes. Welcome back, my friend. Good to see you, Dave. And boy, 2020, that was a time. I was so grateful you invited me to that thing because it was the first time I felt like, okay, the world's not completely crap the bed. Somebody sensible is still living life. And it was, uh, it was good to be there with you and the whole gang. Well, and I mean, just let's talk about the truth of it is you've never gotten as much hate mail as you got from doing that event. So <laughs> it was awesome. I mean, you just, you pissed off everybody by being here because I was in the middle of pissing off the entire world doing the thing. It was pretty crazy. So it was fun though. We, Hey, why not? Why not? We got to do it. But you and I have gotten to talk about not only the, the idea that we've talked about around the student loan crisis. You appeared on our Borrowed Future documentary. We've looked at this labor thing through the student loan crisis. The idea that college is necessary to succeed is absolute bunk. Uh, nothing wrong with college, but the idea that it's the only ticket to success is crazy. What that messaging has done to the trades and how it's killed them, uh, that, that there's just this backlog of need in the trades now, and, and you're a champion of that and have done such a good job with it. We've talked about that. Uh, we've had, you and I have been on the air talking about your work ethic scholarship and the, uh, the, the actual tenets of that. What do we call those? The, the, what, what do you call it? The <coughs> guidelines? Work to, ethic. Oh, oh, the sweat pledge. The sweat pledge. Thank you. Yes. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, cause that pisses the people off that don't want to work. Right. It's a crazy. Well, look, we are living in a crazy time where it seems like overnight that which was virtuous has become a vice and almost vice versa in some ways. Work ethic, for instance, is officially a bad word in a lot of corporate handbooks now. Ambition, drive, delayed gratification, all the stuff that used to be baked into the basic Boy Scout oath has become, oh, what's the word? Problematic, right? <laughs> and so the, uh, you Politically know. Politically incorrect, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, listen, the guy you just talked to, Anthony, right? I mean, yeah. he's got questions. Those questions are always relevant, and you're great <clears throat> at answering them on a, on a micro level, right? Like, what do you do from a leadership standpoint? How can you help uh, train your people? Yeah. But... What you and I are talking about now is what happens when that guy, Anthony, you know, he's still got to run his business, but the pool from which he can recruit went from this big to something about a third of the size. Yep. We got 7.2 million able-bodied men in prime working age sitting out the workforce. That's, that's never happened in peacetime. By before. sitting out, we mean they are not counted in the unemployment statistics, because they're not trying to get a job. That's right. That's the Nick Eberstadt number, right? That's right. And, and, and that's really, I mean, I've been singing out of this hymn book for 15 years since my foundation started, and I always kind of lean into it a little bit more every year. But this year is different. This year, coming out of the lockdowns, guys like Anthony, and you're right, he's heroic. Anybody who's trying to run a small business today and recruit in this environment, is is dealing with Herculean obstacles. Yep. So I've got nothing but sympathy for that guy, and and nothing but worry, and maybe a little bit of contempt for this giant chunk of our workforce that has simply abdicated. They, they they're just sitting out, Dave. And how they're making ends meet without working, I guess that's a conversation for another time. But it's 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 certainly part of it. Yep. Yep. And, uh, you know, helping them not make those ends meet unless they get up off their butts again is a conversation, too. I, uh, you know, those that don't work, uh, don't let them eat, the good book says. And that's the good book, by the way. And so, <laughs> let's just yeah. be. Unfortunately, consequences is one of those words we're not really allowed to talk no, about that's exactly anymore. Right. 
So, it be, because it wouldn't be fair for exactly. things to, you know, cause and effect. That's that's not fair either, I suppose. We could take it all Strange the way back days. to parenting. If you want, my, my granddaughter, uh, Rachel's daughter, uh, we were at the lake house last summer, uh, and she's a little too articulate for a four-year-old. But I said, where's your cousin? And she said, he's inside. And I said, what's he doing? He's with his dad. What are they doing? He's experiencing consequences. <laughs> <laughs> I said, have you experienced consequences? And she said, yes, Papa Dave, I have. At which point I was very proud of both of my daughters and uh, sons-in-law for helping their children experience consequences because that means that they can actually understand cause and effect. It's good. You and I are old enough. You and I are old enough, and I bet a lot of your listeners are too, to remember a game show once upon a time called Truth or or Consequences. And uh, <clears throat> I always thought it should have been truth and consequences, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. call it what you will, we're kind of short on both exactly, nowadays. Exactly. And so I think... Mike and I have yeah. been talking about this, and Nick Eberstadt that brought up the 7.2 million uh, men who aren't unemployed because they're not wanting to be employed, so they're not counted in the unemployment numbers. Uh, you know, we, we I read a book by Easter, a uh, Pulitzer Prize guy uh, called Comfort Crisis, uh, my friend Craig Groeschel, one of the top pastors in America, has written a book on personal growth where he talks about making hard, right decisions, do the right things, the, do, do the hard things the right way is, is part of being a high quality leader. Ken Coleman that talks about work on our team here at Ramsey is just going bananas about this whole work ethic and the quiet quitting thing and the this race to mediocrity thing. Dr. John Deloney on our team is talking about the mental health side of this because when you don't work and accomplish things, it causes despair. It causes a loss of dignity. And so there's a mental health application that goes with this. And when you tell a whole segment of the population that they're not essential, and then you see suicide st- statistics go up, uh, hello, that goes with the territory too. So all of this has been stewing in a, in a, in a gumbo that, that Mike Rowe and I have been stirring, and so we're going to do an event called America's Labor Crisis, and we're going to have those five guys on with Mike and I. We're going to be interviewing them and, and adding commentary as we go along Thursday, May the 4th. Uh, the stream is for you small business people. It's completely free. We just want to create the conversation and stir up a ruckus uh, because uh, we want people to look forward to work ethic. Uh, calluses on your brain or your hands are good. Learning to persevere and have grit is good. Teaching your kids to do that is good. Sitting on your butt in your mother's basement playing Halo when you're 28 is not good. And we're going to say these things out loud very loudly and very in your face. Mike's always a little more articulate and kind than I am, but I'm here to add color. So there we go. And uh, we'll be doing this from the Ramsey Live Event Center on May the 4th. And we want you to come. Go to entreleadership.com slash labor crisis, and you can sign up to watch the live stream completely free. And that's uh, that, That's where all this is headed, is, is that we've been kind of, there's like different buckets of this stuff. You know, we're, we're the, the quiet quitting thing, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's the sure. bucket of the un- unemployed. There's a parenting bucket almost in this. And then there's the leadership bucket. Uh, you know, we've got to be leaders that people want, that inspire people instead, and, of, instead of cracking a whip on folk. And there's the cost of education, right? I mean, you yeah. can't talk about vocation without talking about education. We're going to have to talk about $1.7 trillion in student loans on the books. Yep. We got to talk about 11.5 million open jobs right now, most of which don't require a four-year degree. They require the training that we're talking about right now. So, yeah, it's an unholy bullia base of bad news and <laughs> dots that don't want to be connected, but we must tell the truth or the consequences will continue to evade us. And that's why I agreed to do this thing with you. Plus, it's always good to see you, and I know there's going to be some decent bourbon around. <laughs> that and possibly a cigar. So there you go. <laughs> that was our this that was our excuse. This this whole thing is an excuse to do that. But uh, yeah. so uh, yeah, we'll we'll even probably get some of your grandpas out there, right? Uh, that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Yeah. Carl Noble would 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 be honored. That's so good, good stuff. Yeah, look, man, I I appreciate you putting it together. The country needs to have the conversation. Period. And you know, we're all pushing the rock up the hill as best we can. Sometimes it feels Sisyphean. Sometimes it feels quixotic. But 
look, we're all in it together. And if our workforce isn't balanced, if, we're, if we've got our thumb on the scale, if we're elevating certain jobs over other jobs, we're going to keep getting more of what we have right now. So it starts with a conversation, and I know you and I are going to have a good one. Yeah, well, I, we, I, I'm good at stirring up a ruckus, and you're good at having a conversation. So we'll <laughs> we'll we'll get it we'll get it pulled together and do all of that. Hey, I think it's interesting uh, before we before we wrap this up for the day. Uh, again, America's labor crisis, entreleadership.com slash labor crisis on May the 4th from the Ramsey Event Center. You can actually come there and watch it if you want to for free. Get in touch with us, Entree Leadership team. They'll get you in there. We're not going to uh, – no, we're charging for those tickets on the floor. That's right. But they'll help you get a ticket. Oh, you can get that at Ram, at, uh, at RamseySolutions.com slash events. You can get that ticket. But anyway, come on out. Mike's going to be with us. Mike, when you <coughs> ran uh, – I watched you do some of this uh, – uh, some of these points that we've been covering here on Fox uh, and, and on the, uh, uh, I believe it was with Bill Hemmer, if I remember right. And, sure. uh, and you got almost no push pushback. You went on CBS in the morning show and <laughs> then, and, and said the exact same thing. And, and you got hate mail. Sure. Yeah. And I was on CNN last night and CNBC the day before that. And basically Dave, I'll go anywhere Mm -hmm. uh, people want to have an honest conversation, really the same conversation you and I are going to have on the 4th. But look, that's okay. I mean, this is my 15th year uh, running a work ethic scholarship program. And since we're talking about money, and if you'll forgive the shameless plug, we've got a couple million bucks we're going to give away next month. And we set it aside specifically for people who want to learn a skill that's in demand. So back to Anthony, back to his struggle to to recruit. We've got to make the pool bigger for guys like him running businesses like the ones he has. So if anybody listening knows of somebody who, who either doesn't want to borrow a vast sum of money to go to a four-year university or who is willing to learn a skill that's in demand, apply for a work ethic scholarship. It's over at microworks.org. You got to jump through some hoops, hey, right? The, the but, sweat pledge. Talk about the sweat pledge. What, what, do, what do they have to pledge to? Well, that's one of the hoops you got to jump through. You simply have to sign a 12-point pledge that I wrote many years ago that talks about things like personal responsibility with regard to on-the-job safety. It talks about gratitude. The very first one says, I've won the greatest lottery of all time. I'm alive. I walk the earth. Above all things, I'm grateful. If we're not on the same page for that, well, that's okay, but this particular pile of free money is probably not going to be for you. Mm -hmm. We talk about delayed gratification. We talk about a decent attitude. All of that happy horse crap that Horatio Alger was spewing a century ago, it's still for sale. So we're just looking for, I don't care about your grades. I care about your attendance character. record. Your character. Yeah, man. And look, it's hard, Dave. It's, it's, it's actually, it's impossible to look into your soul and and weigh and measure somebody that way. But we can at least have a conversation about it. Mm -hmm. And the world's full of scholarship programs that reward academic achievement and talent and athleticism. We go with work ethic. We start there because that's what feels most efficient. Then we get you the training you need. We've got 1,500 people who've gone through this program. Half of them are making six figures a year. They're all working in the skilled trades. And we're doing it again right now as we speak, and we'll do it again later in the year. So there it is. You know, if you or somebody you know is willing to learn a skill that's in demand, microworks.org, apply now. And if somebody wants to uh, donate to that foundation, <clears throat> can they do that too? No, no, we got, we got all the money we need, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Things you never hear on Entree Leadership. Yes. Um, well, look, we've given away close to seven million bucks. I've raised most of it doing a lot of strange things over the years, but I've never said no to a tax-deductible check at microworks.org. You'll see a giant donate button. That would be your clue. There you go. That, that, that's how you hit that. Just hit the button you know, and then follow through. That's good. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. May the 4th, America's labor crisis with Mike Rowe, Dave Ramsey, Michael Easter of Comfort Crisis, Craig Groeschel, Dr. John Deloney, Ken Coleman, and uh, Nick Eberstadt all will be with us. Mike and I will be interviewing them, talking about the parts of this 
discussion that they are experts on, some of the top thought leaders in the entire world. They've got their hands around the numbers, the statistics, the economics, uh, the uh, mental health aspects of this more than anybody walking the planet right now. We put together the A-team on this and, uh, and, and really excited to get to do this with you, my friend. Mike Rowe, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for having me, David. I will see you soon. You got it, brother.